Good day, brothers and sisters. Hope you're doing well this Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Easter. This happens to be Good Shepherd Sunday, and Lord knows we are in need of a shepherd. We, uh, you know, in this day and age, we are so modernized, so technologically advanced, we have forgotten what perhaps what a shepherd is. Uh, we think that uh, the things just happen, uh, just appear in the grocery stores, uh, that the food just comes to us just from out of nowhere and comes in cans. Uh, we have forgotten that all of these things, uh, the food comes from farms, meat comes from the cattle that are raised on the farms and the ranches. But the, the, the role of a shepherd is very important and that role still exists today. It still exists today. We need a good shepherd. And I've just wanted to briefly go over the words that our ancestor David, King David wrote in the Psalms. This was probably one of the first uh, passages of scripture that I was ever taught and that I heard the, the, uh, the, uh, the 23rd Psalm, the Psalm of the Good Shepherd. And it goes like this. The Lord is my shepherd, there's nothing I shall lack. In green pastures he makes me lie down. To still waters he leads me, he restores my soul. He guides me along right paths for the sake of his name. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, you comfort me. You set a table before me in front of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Indeed, goodness and mercy will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Yes, these are the words that describe a good shepherd. And if we look at them, we can apply them to all of the different things that Jesus does for us within our lives. The Lord is my shepherd. David acknowledges he is the one that he follows. He is the one who calls out and he will answer to that voice. He makes me to lie in green pastures and leads me to still waters. He provides for my needs. He guides me along right paths. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. Even though I walk through the valley, the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Your rod and your staff comfort me. Jesus, before he left, created his church, the church that would lead us for the centuries to come in his teachings so that we would know how to proceed as people of God. You set a table before me in front of my enemies. Jesus gives us his very body and blood in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. What better food than for the journey than to have his body and blood? You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Through the sacrament of baptism, we are signed with the oil of chrism on our foreheads, marking that we belong to Jesus Christ. Indeed, goodness and mercy will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Essentially, what he's saying is that right living, as Jesus told, him when, when, uh, told us when he was asked, what were the greatest of the commandments? And he said, to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And the second, to love your neighbor as yourself. If we follow these two commandments, we are following right living in pursuit of our heavenly homeland. We, in this particular day and age, because of the things that are going on around us, we have so many constraints that are, that are being put on us and our households in trying to take care of our children and our families. We can always be assured that Jesus will lead us in the, in the right path if we but listen to and look for his voice, we can find that in the church as well. We can come to mass. We can listen to Jesus's voices, voice in the gospel readings. And we can also come to mass and sit in front of the tabernacle because Jesus is present 
in the Blessed Sacrament. This is a beautiful gift that we have as part of our faith and part of our church. So, brothers and sisters, I leave you with that today. God bless you. I know that things have been relaxed somewhat, and perhaps we will begin back on our journey back to what I guess we could call normal. But I thank you for coming, and I just want to bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.